Yo, Kippus Guy here. Hey, so I want to talk to you guys about things you should do before running calibration. Most modern A receivers and processors, if not all of them, have their own microphone, maybe even their own stand or tripod. And the point of it is, is to put this in your listening position and run its built-in calibration. Now, the problem that I see that you want to fix before running calibration that I see a lot of people do is not set their room up before running calibration. And what do I mean by setting the room up? Well, for me, I watch my movies with the door closed and the windows closed, the blinds or curtains shut. So I want to set my room up that way so that when I run calibration, it's calibrating it in the way that I'm going to listen. A lot of people will leave the door open or they leave their HVAC system on, their AC, their air conditioner. They leave it on during calibration and the microphone picks all this up and then calibrates it incorrectly because that's not the way that you're gonna to listen to the system. So before you run calibration, close the door or leave it open if that's how you watch your movies. Keep the window open or closed depending on your preference. Turn off the AC and then run calibration so that your system is preparing your ears for the way that you intend to listen to it, not some other way that you're not gonna to listen to it at all. Move the pillows where they're gonna be. Make sure that you have it in your position. If you lean back when you watch TV, well, put the seat back and put the microphone where your head's gonna be at. So you just wanna set the room up so that whenever you're running calibration, it's configuring it to the way that you plan to watch it the most. Another big thing that I see related to rooms that people don't take into account is acoustic treatment, panels, carpet, rugs, things like this. You want to get that before you run calibration. Now, if you just started an in-home theater or maybe you don't have the, the funds to get acoustic treatment yet, that's fine. Run calibration, do the best you can. But if you have acoustic treatment, make sure not only do you have it, but you put it in the right spots. Acoustic treatment is made to reduce reflections or fix base in corners or diffuse or absorb certain frequencies. So there's different panels that do different things. So you want a good mixture in your room, but you also want it in the right places. So make sure that your placement is correct. I do have videos in my how-to playlist called how to set up acoustic treatment. It'll tell you exactly how you need to get started on acoustic treatment, but make sure that you have some, and if not, plan to get some because it will only make your room sound better and it will give your processor or your receiver a better chance at tuning it correctly. A room is a really hard thing to get correct and you're relying on a microphone to get all these things right. This mindset in your receiver thinking, I gotta do this, 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 all these calculations. You wanna give it a best chance to be correct by getting the acoustic treatment right so that it doesn't have a lot of things to fix. So get your acoustic treatment, put it where it goes, and then run calibration, along with closing your door, closing the curtains, and everything else we talked about in the last clip. Now we're gonna take this a step further. Another thing that you really need to do, and this is super important, what you need to do before running calibration, after you've done all that, is make sure your speakers are in the correct places, especially your front three. If you need a toe-in, make sure that they're towed correctly, or make sure that they need to be towed in at all. They may not. Make sure that your speakers are ear level or as close to it as possible. Make sure your center channel is literally in the center, either just below or just above your screen, whether that's a TV or a projector screen, or if it's an acoustic screen, make sure, a transparent screen, make sure that your receiver or process, processor is ready to take on that challenge. So make sure your speakers are set up correctly. Placement, toe in, pulling them off the wall about three feet, getting them out of a cabinet or getting the center channel off the floor. Just make sure your placement is as optimal as possible in your room before running calibration. If it is not, your receiver or your processor will try its best to account for it, but it's easier and more accurate if you put things where it's supposed to be because that's what your receiver expects. Putting your speakers in correct placement allows your AV processor or AV receiver to get their distances right. Setting the distance between your speaker and your ear, it's very important to get that. That has to do with delay. 
getting the volume level correct. If one speaker is too far away than the other speaker, well, that speaker's gonna be a lot louder because it's a lot further and it's going to be more delayed or your closer speaker will be more delayed. So you wanna make sure your speaker placement's correct. Pull it off the wall, especially if your speakers are ported so you're not adding unnecessary boominess to the bass. You wanna do all these little things to make a big difference in your calibration once you're ready to run it. Now this is a big one and I guarantee you 75% of people out there are really bad about doing this, but AV receivers and AV processors make you do it. So you wanna set your subwoofers correctly before running calibration. And what do I mean by correctly? Well, of course, a subwoofer is a speaker, so you wanna make sure its placement is correct. On top of that, you have volume, crossover, and phase you want to make sure are correct. On the back of your subwoofer, most likely, you're going to have a volume knob, right? You're going to have a crossover knob, and then you're going to have a phase, whether it's a switch 0 to 180, or normal or reverse, or it's a variable dial 0 to 180, or even 0 to 360, you want to set all that to default. Zero, set your normal reverse to normal, set your phase to whatever, so that the receiver or the preprocessor can make that decision for you at first at least, and then you can go back and correct it. But you wanna set your volume at halfway. When you run your calibration, if your subs are too loud, most likely most modern receivers will tell you that it's too loud and it won't run calibration until you lower it. That's because they want all your speakers to be about 75 to 80 dB. If your subs are too loud, you're already starting off on the wrong foot. Most receivers will make you tune it down, but in case yours doesn't, make sure you tune your sub down to at least the 12 o'clock position. That's usually halfway on your sub. That allows the AV receiver or processor to make adjustments. If it's too loud, it has nowhere to go. It may need to tune it down lower than it actually can because your volume is too high. Same thing for too soft. If you turn it down too low, the microphone may not be able to pick it up. And if you have multiple subwoofers, now you have an issue of one sub being too loud or the microphone not hearing both subs and it thinks you only have one when you have two. So just make sure you set your subs to half on the volume, turn your crossover all the way up or to LFE. This disables the in-amp crossover. It makes it full range in a sense so that your receiver can set the crossover for you. So usually you'll see 40 to 150 or maybe even 50 to 200. Whatever your max crossover is, turn it up to as full tilt as possible so that your receiver or preprocessor can make the crossover for you. It wants to hear everything that's going on in your room. So don't have anything preset, set it to default and let your receiver do everything. Then you can go back and tailor it if you don't like the way it sounds. That's just a few tips you wanna do before running calibration. I'm sure there are plenty more, but I wanted to hit on the main four, setting your environment correctly, getting your front stage set up correctly, getting your acoustic treatment set up correctly, and then setting up your sub configuration correctly as well. Those are the main four you really wanna get correct before running calibration. If you have issues with calibration or it's really wrong or you don't like what it does, Sometimes you have to step back and think, okay, but did I give my AV receiver the best chance at getting correct? Did I put my microphone at ear level? Did I pull my seats away from the back wall? Did I angle my speakers incorrectly? There's a lot of things that you can do prior to running calibration that will yield better results. So if you apply those four things to your system before running calibration, you'll, you will have better results. And better results equal better sound. So try them out if you haven't before. If you ran calibration long ago and things have changed in your room, you added more furniture, added a rug, whatever, rerun calibration. If you added new speakers, rerun calibration. If you moved anything, rerun calibration, because I promise you, if you include these four tips, it'll make a difference in your sound, or maybe you're just as good as I am, and you've already done all this, and you don't have any improvements to make on that front. Good job for you. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know other tips for other people that you've incorporated in your home theater to get the best out of calibration. That can really help a lot of people. A lot of people don't know these things. So leave me all your tips down below. Hit that like button and subscribe if you are not already. You better be already. You better. See you guys later. K-Pay Sky out. Peace.